Welcome everybody. And this is our third interview with the Park Slope Windsor Terrace artists. And we feature tonight Judith, Judith Hooper, Judith, uh, sorry, Eloise, Judith Eloise Hooper and Robin Roy. Judith, you're gonna show us your studio with a live view from what I understand, is that right? Yes. I'll try to do it slowly and evenly. Okay. You ready? Yeah, and uh, participants, if you want to go to speaker view, it might, uh, you'll see the picture large that way. Again, I recommend participants go to speaker view. <coughs> Anything you want to tell us about what we're looking at? Well, you know, I also, I work in paper, but I also work in clay. I, I did clay for about 20 years. So I, I've tried to divide my studio in half. The half you're looking at now is supposed to be the ceramic half. Um, and then it's just all the stuff that I use for everything all over everywhere. I'm in the middle of preparing for a show. And so um, I, I tend to work in chaos. Uh -huh. um, that it starts out clean. And as I'm working, it all just sort of piles up. And on the doors, I just have images that I either want to use for something or have used for something. And I, I look at the images as characters that I will use over and over again and make them larger and smaller and you know dress them up differently. Mm -hmm. And yes, my background is I studied fashion at Pratt Institute and I worked as a fashion illustrator for years and then um, was a teacher's aide at School of Visual Arts and took a class in uh, book writing and illustration and did that for a while. And uh, then switched to working in clay. And I did clay for about 20 years. And the paperwork came out of, I volunteer at Methodist Hospital, um, mostly doing a program in the um, psych ward but I also worked at their cancer infusion center doing writing and artwork with people while they were receiving chemo. And, um, but in the, the psych ward is where I started doing the portraits in paper. And I would always do one of myself and make fun of myself so they would know to have fun with it. And I'd say it's how you want to be seen or how you think others see you or, you know, whatever. And um, I would do one of myself and, and make fun of myself. And they all just got stacked up in my closet for years. And then one summer, it was time to show at BWAC. And I hadn't done anything. And it was too hot to fire my kiln. And I thought, well, let me take these out and give them a background. And so I'll have something to put up on the wall. And the rest yeah. is history. How long? No, I was I been? was amazed at the response it got. Let's <laughs> so, go to the first slide now. Shall we see that? Yes, first slide. You say you work in chaos, but this looks like all your work looks like it's done in a meticulous manner. Well, the the work itself, but just in my doing the work, like you know, this is my desk, or you you're on the right. slide. Right. It's just <laughs> piles of stuff all over the place, and I. I try to come in every morning, just clean up all the little pieces of paper on the floor so it looks clean, but everything is sort of stacked up, but I'm, I'm amazed that I know where everything is. Right. And so this, this piece, was, this is one of the um, pieces that I actually did in the psych ward. And so this is one of the first ones and it's called hamburger because what she's holding in her hand is a hamburger. Ah. The hamburger actually I made while in college, oh. uh, one of my roommates was getting married and we, my friend and I made the invitations by making these uh, bacon burgers out of paper. And uh, we sent them out in brown paper bags and the, the bill was the invitation. A lot of people didn't know what it was and didn't turn up. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, and so with this piece, I decided that I would take that hamburger and put it in her hands. All right. I love hamburgers. Okay. <laughs> and you like coffee. Uh, <laughs> okay. And this piece, uh, so this is the jump from 
that one is just cut out um, thoughtlessly. <laughs> um, and this is taken from, uh, I have every sketchbook I've ever had. And so this piece is called, at least I have my coffee and it's from my sketchbook. So it was interesting for me to, when I decided to try and use my sketches to do the paperwork, um, how it, it sort of altered the drawings in a way. And I, I always like going outside of the frame. And this one, I just had fun playing with the different patterns. So I, I tend to just collect paper and I find paper that I just like, and then I, that's also all over the place. So that um, when I'm doing something, I just have all this material mm -hmm. that I can choose from. Next. So I have a whole series from drawing on the subway and um, I decided to put them at a table uh, and I'm, I'm just fascinated by, I, I sit on the train and I look at all the people who are on their cell phones or some kind of device. And uh, so I decided to put these people together at a table, each of them on, on their, um, and God, what did I call this? I call this addiction because it seems to be the way everybody was going. But it's interesting to me that when I did this, I looked at it as a negative. And then now as we've been in the pandemic for over a year, <laughs> um, I see how these devices are what helped hold everybody together. Right. But I also had fun playing with, I, I love figuring out how to make something happen. So to do the scarf around her neck or to curl the, the paper to make her hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then just playing with colors and patterns. So this was just fun for me to put together and to make some of the pieces three-dimensional. So that's why I like that everything I do has some kind of depth to it. It's, they're not flat. How large is this? Or, or, and our, that our, one our, is um, maybe 16 by 20. Oh. That's large. They're, right. they're, they're, they're small. Next. Okay, this I did last year during the pandemic or at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement. And I'm generally a very literal person. And so it was interesting for me to be very metaphorical. Um, and so I did this whole series that this is part of, but this is the largest one of them. Um, you're gonna ask me what size and I'm gonna say 20 by 30, I think. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I feel as a person of color, I wear our history in this country on my skin. And so I decided that I would dress them in, in, in this series, I would dress them in our history. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 72 this year and it's just, it was interesting. <laughs> Yeah. to just see a repeat of what I experienced as a, as a teenager or an, or an adolescent. Right. And, uh, and so I, I made that his background and for it, you know, to make his overalls, the I, I am a man, um, because it's like we have to keep reminding people that we are human. Um, and uh, the sign that sort of, you know, you can't see because of his hands and the mask says, I can't breathe. Uh -huh. And the, the names are the names of uh, people killed by police. Wow. Too long. Okay. Yeah, too and long list. This, this image actually comes from, I had a friend who was a teacher. I was doing an art program for him. And he came one day and he was looking at how the project was coming along. And he was dressed in overalls and he was like a seventh grade high school teacher, science teacher. And he told me the story of something that he had done as a child or was going to do. And at the last minute changed his mind. And so I began to see him not for who he was, but for he, who he could have been. And uh, so he's an image that I've used like three different times telling different stories about this one person. Next.
Okay. I have a lot of friends who are musicians, and so I love going and sketching while they're performing. And uh, so for me, um, you know, you're always in this darkened room and they are the focal point. And I, I love, I just love drawing instruments and not so much in this one, but um, I love watching their hands as they're performing. And I find that if I watch and you can follow the rhythm of the music, you know when the hand is gonna be in the same position again. And so I'm sitting and I'm, I'm waiting for that. And it, it was just fun for me to, you know, make up characters as to who they are. And that's how I decide, you know, she's got this very kind of wild little hat on. And um, so that's, that's that. And so there's a whole series that I've done of musicians performing. Next. More phones. Okay, yeah, so more phones. <laughs> So this one was called Otherwise Engaged. There you go. We and, uh, engaged with an addiction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, originally thought of it as a negative. <laughs> but after the pandemic, it's what helped hold us all together, having all these different devices that we could connect on. And, uh, you know, for, once again, it's, it's three-dimensional. And I love having people move outside of the frame. Uh, and these are four separate drawings uh, of figures that I, I put together. So it's always fun for me. My copy machine is my best friend as I enlarge things or make them smaller or, you know, so I can work out what's the best balance of things and to just to play with the different colors and the shapes. I just, I just loved each one of these shapes and it was fun to put them all together and have them moving in and out of the frame. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those papers are actually handmade papers. I have a friend who lives in California and makes paper. Her husband works in clay. So when I go out there and stay with them, I call myself going to summer camp. <laughs> she and I will spend <clears throat> all day long in the garden making paper where we've even taken her dried iris leaves and cut them up and soak them and ground them and, and made paper out of them. You know, it's uh, almost photographic. This uh, I really looks looks suggests that it's a photograph. I could imagine taking a picture of people like that in the subway in the in those positions. Well, you know, because each each yeah. So I'm always captured by the position that the person is standing in and the shape that they make. And so sometimes sometimes it's about the shape. Sometimes it's about the color. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes on the sketch, there's a little note so that I remember what really struck me about it. Sometimes I ignore that afterwards. Um, but for this one, it was just, especially the woman in the, in the green, when the green jacket with the backpack, I just love that figure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so they were, they're all just fun to do. And I remember the woman on the far right, she was really sort of leaning up against the door and the pole and, you know, it just, fascinates me how people can be just so focused on this one thing in front of them when there's this whole world going on <laughs> all around them. Right. So next. Okay, this, I, I, love, I love this photograph and it's actually very three-dimensional one of my pieces, but the paper that I use is that handmade Japanese paper, but it photographs like watercolor. So for this, it works very well. For other things, I've sometimes used the paper for the skin and then it, it just, it's really blotchy to photograph. But I had a friend who was um, dying of an inoperable brain cancer and she had two children. The girl was 12 and the boy was maybe 14 or 15. And she was very worried about the age that she was leaving her daughter at. And we had gone, we had a mutual friend who um, lived up in Bearsville and it was winter time. And so we, a bunch of us had gone up with the kids so the kids could just have this fun weekend sledding up and down the, the driveway. And in the evening, we were all sitting in the kitchen and she was sitting, sharing the seat with her daughter and she had her arms around the daughter. And I remember taking the photograph because I felt like 
she was trying to imprint on her daughter the feeling of the warmth of her body, to feel her embrace, to have her words resonate through her daughter's body as she spoke so that she would have that to hold on to after she was gone. And um, so I, I remember taking the photograph after she died, I sent the photograph to her daughter and it always sort of haunted me when I went through my photographs. And so I decided that I would do this piece and it's actually very small. And, you know, it's one of those things where I felt I looked at it and I could feel it and nobody else would think anything of it. Yeah. And it sold before the show even opened and it was bought by this mother to give to her daughter and it's called a mother's embrace. Wow. And, um, you it's know, just, it's just wonderful. And, and everything you're saying comes through in that picture. Um, just wonderfully. It's very moving. And I, I, you know, in all of my pieces, you really have to look at the hands. And I, I love the hands and this is her mother's hands or on top of her hands. And um, yeah. yeah, every time I look at it, I just remember that moment. And um, I'm, I'm very happy that it, it tells the story. Yeah, uh, well, I am too. And speaking of story, I think uh, if you don't mind, we will end here. I'm done. <laughs> All right. And uh, thank you very much, Judith. That was a wonderful, wonderful talk. Thank you.